be reading from Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. On, and nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, they gather together, they come to you. Your son shall come from afar, and your daughter shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and exalt, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Epheth and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let us pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Last Sunday was a big day in the McLean family. We are, as you know, and I've told you over and over again, huge Pittsburgh Steelers fans. So, so we, had, we had to rush from church to get home to put on all our lucky gear, to make the, the lucky lunch, to sit down in front of the TV and, and tune in to something that had only ever happened once before. Only once had a team that began 0-4 made it to the playoffs. So we tuned in and we were flipping between three games. We needed the New York Jets to beat Miami in Miami. We needed Baltimore to lose to Cincinnati in Cincinnati. And we needed the Steelers to win at 1 o'clock. And lo and behold, all of that happened. Now we only needed one more thing. We needed, yeah, too bad, we needed, San, we needed Kansas City to go out to beautiful, sunny California, a better team than San Diego, and beat San Diego and California. As we turned to that game, we found out that Kansas City's coach decided to rest 20 of his 22 starters. What the heck? <laughs> That's not good for us. But we sat and we watched this game, and, and to our, our surprise, Kansas City outplayed San Diego for the majority of the game until near the end, and San Diego started to come back and tie the game near the end of the game. But then Kansas City got the ball, and they started marching down the field and got to within 31 yards of the goal and were set up to kick a field goal of 41 yards, something that a professional football kicker should have absolutely no problem doing. We were going to the playoffs. We would be the second team in history to go 0-4 and, and make it to the playoffs. And what did he do? He missed it by that much. So the game goes into overtime and of course, San Diego wins the game, Kansas City loses, and Pittsburgh sits at home in the playoffs. But that's okay, there's always next year when it comes to football. And baseball season is right on the horizon. So this probably ends all my football analogies for a while. But the reason I bring that up is, if you start 0-4, you have very little opportunity to ever go any further. And I don't know precisely in the life of this church where we are. Are we? 0 and 1, 0 and 2? Are we 0 and 3? Are we 1 and 2 or are we 1 and 3? I don't know. But we certainly don't want to be 0 and 4. As we start a new year, we have to remember that this church was planted here 19 years ago. This building was erected to be a temporary sanctuary and office space so that until we had a permanent church. And we seem to be permanently in the temporary. Are we 0 and 2, 0 and 3? Are we pushing 0 and 4? 
You see, the difference between the teams that made it to the playoffs, and there were some of them that started the season 0-2, 0-3. There were some playoff teams that started the season 1-3 or 2-2. and The difference between making the playoffs and not making the playoffs is that they took the initiative against drudgery. Drudgery is that hard work that we have to do. The stuff that's monotonous. The stuff that, you know, is menial, that seems menial to us. They took the initiative against the drudgery. Those teams that started out slow, that made it, went back to the drawing board as a team. And they worked hard. They did the mundane things, the monotonous things that were needed to turn their seasons around so that they could continue. Where are we? Are we willing to take the initiative against drudgery, against the hard work that's needed to turn this around, to make this what God intended it to be? You see, there is no point in us waiting on God to do something. We need to act as if there is no God. And I know you're sitting there shocked. We need to act as if there is no God. We need to rise and shine. And when we do that, what we will find is God is already there waiting for us. God is not going to do it for us. We have got to do it for ourselves. God will help us. God will inspire us. God will be divine in the process, but we have to do the hard work. And if we are not willing to rise and shine, for our light has come, then we're going to go 0 and 4. You know, I've heard a couple times since I've been here, oh, you know, God will get us a new building. Oh, somebody will hit the lottery and give us millions of dollars and we'll build a building. And we sit and we do nothing. We have got to arise and shine knowing that our light has come. Isaiah was writing these words 700 years before Jesus to the church of Israel. And what's very interesting about this, what word was repeated in this very often? You. Now, if you're writing to the church and you're saying you, what would you think the tense of that you would be? All y'all. Plural, right? All of y'all. Every one of the you's is singular. He's writing to the church and all the yous are singular. What does that say to us as a church? We are one. We're not, we may be individuals, but the church functions as one. You, you, fellowship, arise and shine. When we stop doing nothing, our drudgery becomes divinely transformed. God is there waiting on us, waiting to bless us, to make what we're doing sanctified and holy. Our task then no longer is monotonous. It's no longer menial. It's God-led and God-driven. Hard work determines our character. It determines our spiritual healthiness. I've heard people, and I'm not saying in this church, but it might be, and it might be somebody sitting, not you, but somebody sitting next to you, <laughs> might have said, been there, done that, too old, too tired, don't want to do it again. You have the capacity to arise and shine, for our light has come. We have to push through the drudgery and let God transform our work into something beautiful. When we begin to see 
our work through holy eyes, our work becomes holy. It's amazing that he wrote these words 700, somewhere between 750 to 700 years before Jesus was born. He wrote them as words of hope and words of encouragement to a church to rise up and shine, to be the light to the world. Boeing, you know, all know who Boeing <laughs> airplanes are. Their, their slogan for Boeing is people working together as one global company for aerospace leadership. What if we saw the church, the United Methodist Church, not just fellowship, but the United Methodist Church in greater Melbourne, Palm Bay, as people working together as for one, as one for global leadership for Jesus Christ? Would that transform us? Would that energize you to arise and shine? Let me read this passage again. And I'm going to replace you since you is singular, you as the church. Hear the words again. Arise and shine, for fellowship's light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon Fellowship United Methodist Church. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the people but the Lord will arise upon Fellowship United Methodist Church, and his glory will be seen upon Fellowship United Methodist Church. And nations, skip nations, our neighbors shall come to Fellowship United Methodist Church's light and kings to the brightness of Fellowship United Methodist Church's rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see, and they all gather together. They come to fellowship, United Methodist Church. Your son shall come from afar, your daughter shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see, then fellowship, United Methodist Church shall see and be radiant. Fellowship, United Methodist Church's heart shall be thrilled and rejoice and exult because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to Fellowship United Methodist Church. The wealth of the nation shall come to Fellowship United Methodist Church. A multitude of camels shall cover Fellowship United Methodist Church. We don't need camels necessarily, but hey, you know, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Young camels of Midian and Ephrath, and those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. What if we saw scripture through those eyes? What if we saw our church through those eyes? As a church, we are arising and shining, doing the hard work, pressing beyond the drudgery to what God's glory could be right here. We are looking for ways as a church and as a denomination, as a conference, as a district, to come together in ministry with one another. We struggle as churches. All, almost all United Methodist churches struggle. Almost all mainline churches struggle. We look and we see the big, big churches, the big mega churches, and we say, gee, that's who we should be. But the majority of the churches in the United States right now worship on average 80 people or less. 80 people or less cannot arise and shine to the glory of God the way the church is supposed to. We have got to find ways to come together, to be one with one another, and to serve God in our community with God at the center. And we can't wait for God to do it. We have got to get up and go forward and rise and shine and find that God is already there waiting for us. God will accomplish God's purposes he can accomplish that through us or without us. I would much prefer that he accomplishes it through us, that God arises and shines in us individually, 
and as a church. In closing, Henry Ford, we all know who he is probably. We actually just recently switched to his car, car line. But Henry Ford wrote many, many years ago, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. We, you, need to work together. We, us, you, that singular church, you, need to work together with other churches for success. We can be successful in this community for God, but we have to rise and we have to shine. For behold, the glory of the Lord has risen upon Fellowship United Methodist Church. We should be excited about that as we enter a new year. It should enliven us and make us want to serve our church in ways that we haven't served before. It should give us energy to do things that we don't think are possible to do. We can do it because God is waiting for us to get up and get moving. We've got to stop sitting around. People in in recovery, we have a Celebrate Recovery program here. People in Celebrate Recovery know they have got to get up and start doing something. They've got to do something different with their lives or it's going to be the same. If we don't start doing something different in this church, it is going to be the same. And the same is this. Do you not see a vision of a new building with four or 500 seats filled with several services, reaching people and this community for God and Jesus Christ? I see that. But we together have to make that happen. All of us, the whole church, we have got to work together. Fellowship United Methodist Church, all of us have a part in that. And each one of our parts may be different, but we have to accomplish that. Not just some of us. You know, what would we have said as a family if the Steelers would have made the playoffs? We are in the playoffs. I'm not in the playoffs. The Steelers are in the playoffs. But we do that as a church, don't we? We sit back and we say, and I'll use our, our big neighbor just to our north. Wow, right? It's really big. You think people did the drudgery to get it that way? You think people did the hard work that was required to get that church to the size that it is? Do you think that they understood that they were to arise and shine for the glory of the Lord had come upon them? We are no different. The glory of the Lord has come upon Fellowship United Methodist Church. We are to arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is upon Fellowship United Methodist Church. All things are possible through Christ. All things work together for the good of God, for those who love God. How much do you love God? How much do we trust God? Do we trust God enough to arise and begin to shine? Or do we want to stay seated in our, I don't, I'd say comfortable, but this isn't really all that comfortable, in our, in our little building until our little building is no more and we look back and go, what happened? What happened is we went 0 and 4, and we are no more. The encouragement in this is if we arise and we shine, if we step out of what we feel as uncomfortable, what we feel is hard work, if we step out of what we think is mundane or monotonous kinds of stuff, and we step out into that, God will transform that to God's glory. And he will work through us. But we have got to take the first step in our own lives and as a church.
There will be things on the horizon. There are things on the horizon right now. There should be some big announcements coming up very soon that are pushing us in that direction. God is working here because God's glory has shown upon fellowship, United Methodist Church. Let God lift your spirits. Step out and trust God and do all that you can and work as hard as you can to bring God's glory to Palm Bay. Within this building, I've said before, there, within three, four mile radius of this building, of this piece of property, there are almost 90,000 people. Where are most of them today? And if they're at home or they're sleeping in, I would say that they are lost. And we have been tasked with finding the lost. We need to be the light that draws people to us. They are out there. Scripture tells us nations shall come to your light but they're not going to come unless our light shines and shines brightly. It's time, my brothers and sisters, to rise and shine. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. May God add a blessing to your understanding. Amen.